Miss, let's keep moving. It's on your right, here. No, no, I'm usually in charge of the second and third. So each maid has her assigned for it. Here we are. Good luck. She's all yours, sir. Sophie Roy, I'm Detective Maurice Tremblay. Let's see. 21 years old, working at the Clarington for over a year. Husband? I'm sorry? Are you married? No, not yet. I live with my mother. She's sick, so I have to take care of her. No father? No. It's always just been me and my mom. All right, Miss Roy. I need you to tell me everything that happened, starting with this morning. Par la fontaine, les filles s'en vont et s'y promènent au bras des garçons qui les entraînent au cœur des buissons où elles étraînent l'amour en saison qui les enchaîne dans un tourbillon le vrai poème car dans les frissons naissent toujours les plus belles chansons d'amour au clair J'ai vu dans tes yeux mille couleurs Quand la claire fontaine s'amusait au jeu de nos deux cœurs Back in means done, now just a bit of tidying up and I can go on break <sighs> The bed's not complete without its pillow The bed's not complete without its pillow That's a lot of money to owe. Just what did you get yourself involved in? A bed's not complete without its pillow. Good enough. Hmm. Only menswear. Are you in town for a business trip, baby? You brought your own mug? Well, I guess ours aren't quite as complimentary. <laughs> 
And voila, good as new. someone who'll feel right at home. Look at her, always glued to that gossip magazine. Do you think she has any real friends? Or is it just Gracie, Joan, and Marilyn? Well, when your own wife is that dull, you need to get your excitement somewhere. <laughs> oh, did you see Rebecca come in this morning? She was wearing the same clothes. Now, don't you think it overreacting? This is exactly the kind of behavior Linda warned me about. <laughs> He's doing everything he can to break us apart. Sophie speaking. Hey, it's Beth. Do you think you could come up real quick? Um, sure. I'll be right there. You're right, you couldn't. No, I really like that. what Beth wanted to talk about. Oh, Shaq. Leaving luggage in the lobby? Are you trying to get Bernard to kill you? This leak really needs to be fixed. I hope the weather doesn't make it worse. I should talk to Beth at the front desk. Poor Nicole. No one should be stuck cleaning up the reception hall after a ball. Hey, Beth. Hey there. So, who's sleeping? Sleep what? You were whispering just now on the phone. So I thought maybe Eugene or Bobby were napping in the break room again. Oh, yeah, no. It's Jacques and Wendy. They were, um... In the middle of something. Ugh, it's so awkward when they start making out like no one's watching. Get a room. We literally work in a hotel. Oh, I try not to pay attention to them. I just find the sucking noise is hard to ignore, you know? But that won't be an issue today, of course. Every sound is being drowned out by the phone's constant ringing. Because of the storm? You have no idea. You're the only person I've talked to today that hasn't mentioned the blizzard. I mean, until now. Oh. Sorry. Meh, it's alright. I guess I'm just looking for something else to talk about. Anything else. Sorry, I, I wish we could talk more, but if Bernard or Linda catch me here talking to you, there will be hell to pay. Ugh, oh, you're right. 
but it's such a stupid rule. It's not like clients Guests. would lose their minds seeing a maid walk through a hotel lobby. How do they think this place gets cleaned? Magic, probably. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of cleaning, wanna guess why I summoned you here? I'm guessing there's something I have to clean? Obviously. But what is it? Uh, did a kid throw up again? God, no. Did that happen recently? Yeah, last week. I can still smell it. Feel it, too. While I was cleaning, some of it got- uh, I'm gonna stop you right there. Keep talking and you'll be cleaning up after me, too. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, no, you'll be glad to know it's nothing gross this time. A nice gentleman decided it was time to redesign the lobby and helped us by knocking over that vase on his way out of the hotel. That's it? I would do it myself, but the last time I tried to leave the front desk, Bernard emerged from his lair to scold me about procedures and whatnot. Well, we can't have the beauty of the Clarington Hotel take absence from her throne, can we? Oh, the people would riot. Bernard especially. <laughs> Bernard's hardly the people. Anyway, I have to get back to work. There's a mop in the supply closet next to Bernard's office, I think. Thanks. I'll see you around. Chocolate mousse cake. Maybe Bobby wouldn't mind sneaking me a slice. Oh, no. Bernard would have both our heads. Okay, let's get that mop from the supply closet. Linda, Wendy's great at her job. Guests absolutely love her and... <laughs> Not just guests, apparently. Oh, God damn it, Linda! I only like her because guests like her. Making sure guests are happy is my job, after all. You don't seem to care whether I'm happy. <sighs> Listen, if Wendy wasn't doing her job, that'd be another story, but I can't just fire her without good reason. What if she stirred up trouble among the staff? Would that be a good reason? Curiosity killed the cat. Oh, Andrew, hi. I, I was, I mean, I'm sorry, I was just- Spying on our manager? No, I, I heard some and I- Hey, hey, hey. It's okay, I'm just pulling your leg. I'm, I'm sorry I scared you. I'm just, I, I'm not used to having people around me while I work. Yeah, you're always working alone up there, aren't you? I actually think it's the first time I've seen you down in the lobby. Don't tell me you've been sent to clean up after the Valentine's Day ball. Were you here Friday night to see the whole thing? Yeah. They had someone in charge of the event, but she ended up crying alone in the stairwell, so I had to take over. What happened? Did it really go so wrong? It certainly didn't go wrong for the people enjoying the party, but for those sober around them, that's another story. Good God. I'm glad I didn't have to be there. I don't know how you do it. And I don't know how you handle cleaning up after other people all day. You must see plenty of weird stuff, right? Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you found in a guest's room? It's a bit gross. Oh. I hope it's got nothing to do with bodily functions. God. I hope so, too. A few weeks ago, I walked into a room and found the trash can filled with cucumbers. Like, whole cucumbers. And some of them were carved, and I threw the whole trash can out that day. Don't tell Bernard. 
I won't. Oh, I, uh, I better go help Beth. It's hell here with the snowstorm. It's okay. I need to, um... Yeah, yeah all right. Take care. You too. As if it wasn't enough having to deal with, with endless letters of advice from Raymond. Raymond? What have you on? Ah, uh, he wants to lower room price. Make sure the hotel stays accessible to everyone. Oh, you still pay this wall for us, baby. Bobby made it very clear he doesn't like anyone walking into his kitchen uninvited. Stairs, exercise. Elevator, convenience. Yeah, elevator wins this time. I've never seen two people more suited for each other. I hope they work things out. They need to. Beth said there was a mop in the supply closet next to Bernard's office. I'm really sorry about that. Okay, Sophie. Time to clean up that mess. must have dropped it when he knocked over the vase. Probably should return it to him. Ew. I better throw that away. Now I just put the leaves back in the vase, and it'll be like nothing ever happened. Maybe Beth remembers who knocked over the vase? He'll want his film roll back. I understand, Mr. Ramsey. I wish I could make the snowstorm disappear. I really do, but sadly, that's not within my power. Beth? Who knocked over that vase? Mr. Spade. Mr. Spade? Well, I can check with the airport and let you know when flights resume. Until then... Yes, yes, I know. You've said that already. But... No, that's very un... So, which room are you staying in, Mr. Spade? Well, you're welcome to speak to my manager if you'd like. I'm sure he'll be thrilled to talk to you. Mm -hmm. No, that's not it. Well, for that you'd Beth have said Mr. Spade. Would you like to contact him? Mm, so Room 505. Great, that's on my floor. I can return that film roll without going out of my way. Yes, certainly. So first I suggest- I should go to the fifth floor to return Mr. Spade's film roll. All right. Then you clasp your hands together and think really hard about just how much you want to do. No, I I'm dead serious. If anyone can make the snowstorm end, it's him. Hello? Sir?
Hold it, please. Phew, made it. Thanks. You're welcome. Was it you who cleaned the puddle by the restrooms? Was I not supposed to? Well, Eugene asked us not to touch anything until he's repaired the leak, but it's probably safer this way. Someone could have slipped on it. Which floor? Oh, uh, sixth. Thanks. What's the big rush? I need to bring this to our VIP guest. The one who rented the entire floor. Oh, is it that British man I keep hearing about? The girls have been complaining about him ever since he arrived. Yeah, I'm sure this one has no thoughts for maids. With the dogs he has up there, his room will be a real mess when he's done with it. Dogs? Bernard must really like him if he allowed pets in the building. Can't you tell me who he is? I've never actually met him. I always talk to his assistant. Only Bernard knows his identity. Oh. Um. I do have a suspicion, though. Oh? But I'm, I'm not sure I should say it. Can't you at least give me a hint? Hmm. Okay, let me think. Whew. Saved by the bell. Hey, come on. Don't leave me hanging. Let's just say... I like to prolong the suspense. Wait, is that the hint? Hmm. Who knows? <laughs> Fair enough. Have fun up there. You too. I should return Mr. Spade's film roll. Room 505 is on my list anyway. Linda's been putting these everywhere lately. It's weird that Bernard allows it. Mr. Spade? Mr. Spade? Beth or Andrew, they'll, they'll know what to do. I hope.
Washington Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. What can I do for you on this very fine day? Beth, I need your help. Sophie? What's going on? I, I think Mr. Spade's stalking me while I work. Really? I knew it! You did? I mean, I knew there was something fishy about him. He just has creep written all over his face, you know? How did you find out? Um, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but... Sometimes, when I clean the rooms, I get a little curious and, um, you know, snoop through our guest stuff. Sneaky. And Mr. Spade caught you in the act, I suppose? Yes. He took pictures of me. I... I found them hanging over the bathtub. He set up a kind of dark room. I think... I think we should call the police. No, that's a terrible idea. But... Sophie, that man has pictures of you running your hands through people's stuff. But I didn't steal anything. I was just snooping, I swear. I know, I know, but... Say a client reports something missing. Those pictures would put a big red target on your back. I could always throw them out. Yeah, not your worst idea, but you found the pictures drying over the bath, right? Yeah. I'm no photographer, but I've been in one of those dark rooms before. You have? Yeah, I modeled for a while. Anyway, what I'm getting at is, those pictures were developed recently, but it doesn't mean there aren't more elsewhere. Well, I didn't look through the entire room, but there is a safe here. I bet you anything there'll be more pictures in there. Do you have the safe combination then? I'm pretty sure it's locked. Hmm, give me a minute. Merde, those idiots. What? I can't find the combination list. The night staff's probably lost it again. Anyway, we always ask that clients write down their code somewhere so they don't have to call reception a dozen times. Maybe you can have a look around the room, and I call you if Mr. Creep comes back. You know, so you can get out of there in time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, and Beth? Mm hmm Please keep this between us. Of course. Okay, if reception gave him a code, maybe he wrote it down. Locked. There has to be a key somewhere. One more pillow, then you're good. X marks the spot, but there's no way this is just a treasure hunt. Is 
Is this from Harry's? I mean, it's a popular spot, but what's that supposed to be? A seven? Hmm. You didn't strike me as much of a doodler. This was the sale where I found that winter jacket that mom loves. Were you there too? I just visited the oratory for the first time in years. This has to be a coincidence, right? Morgan, is that your real name? Why did you check in under Mr. Spade? Schedule. Just how long have you been watching me? One man's trash is another maid's trash. I hope you aren't eating those beans. to move to 507. Why did you want to change rooms? Yeah, no surprise Bernard denied the request. Mrs. Beaumont's been here so long, we could probably just put her name on the door at this point. Could that be a reminder for the safe combination? Get my own head if I didn't write everything down. I guess we have that in common. There may be something in that suitcase. If only I could find the key. What do we have here? I need to find some clues to decipher that code reminder. hospital and it looks like you left with a long list of diagnoses and date of discharge 1957 hmm. 57 Is he here? He... what? No. Beth, you said you'd call if Mr. Spade was coming back to his room. Oh yeah, I did say that. Sorry for the fright. Oh my god, Beth. I nearly had a heart attack when I heard the phone ring. I didn't mean for it. I was just so caught up in the thrill of it all. I had to check in. Did you find more pictures of you? No, I haven't. But I did find something else. Yeah? He's got a kind of 
yarn map of Montreal on the wall. A yarn map? And where does it lead to? Lots of places. Most of them I've visited recently. Merde. What's the deal with this guy? I think you may be using an alias. I found some evidence that points to his real name being Paul Morgan. <laughs> well, he's certainly not the first man to check into a hotel under a fake name. Is it really common practice? It is, when the man in question is married, but the woman accompanying him isn't. Or at least, not to him. Hmm. Considering the state of his room, I doubt Mr. Morgan was expecting any visitors. Did you find anything else? seems to be in love with this woman who doesn't love him back. You mean you? No, no, someone else. I found lots of letters addressed to a woman named Lindsay, but she returned them all to sender, unopened. Are you sure it's love and not obsession? Maybe he stalked her like he's stalking you. I don't know. Whatever it is, I find it strange she didn't open the letters before sending them back. I would have... I had a look at them first. <laughs> of course you would have. So, is that all you found then? He has this book with, um, underdressed women on the cover. I don't think Playboy magazine qualifies as a book. No, no, it's not. It, it's a novel. It's called, um, And They Were Roommates. Oh, I see. And I suppose these women on the cover are really good friends, aren't they? What do you mean? Well, if it's what I think it is, it's probably one of those trashy books for men who secretly fantasize about two women getting real cozy with each other. Have you ever read one? Yes, they're awful. I thought Andrew was the book expert. Oh, he definitely is an expert on everything you'll find in a nice little bookstore. As for me, I'm more the every weird thing you'll find at a train station expert. <laughs> Did you find anything else on Mr. Morgan? I'll know more once I open the safe. Oh, so you found the combination? Yeah, sort of. I'm impressed. Well done, Arsène Lupin. What? Uh, never mind. Don't let me keep you. Okay. I'll call you back. Yeah, you better. I won't call again unless Mr. Morgan returns. For real this time. All right. Thanks. Ninety-ninth Infantry Division. Ninety-nine. You're pawning off your possessions? What do you need the money for? Lindsay. 
Did something happen between the two of you before she died? Thirty four Summer Street. Lindsay's address. Sophie, you should probably put this down. Now. M and H. M and H. Who are they? Are they... That was taken in the lobby. That was taken in the lobby. through their trash? You really want to find out what M and H are up to, don't you? Why are you following them? And who's sneaking out at night? So many questions. This looks like Beaver Lake. Film. How many pictures have you taken, Mr. Morgan? Did you intend for me to discover your little dark room? Or did this just fall down? Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. It's me. Oh. Andrew, Andrew, come for me, will you? What's going on? Hey, Tintin, just do it. Sorry about that. So, I take it you opened Morgan's safe? What was in it? A journal. His journal? Does he say why he's stalking you? No, but it seems he's stalking two other people as well. Oh, who are they? They're guests. I don't know their names, though. I, I was hoping we could find them in the lockbook. Well, Snoopy, although it may seem like it, I'm not actually clairvoyant, so... I'll need something to narrow the search. Do you know anything about them? Mr. Morgan refers to them as H and N. Well, that could mean a lot of things. It could be their initials, or, I don't know, husband and mistress. Of that. Yeah. I'll need a little more to go on. Hmm. From what I can gather, it seems they're together. Okay, so they must be staying in the same room. Do we have a lot of couples at the moment? Uh, well, yes. It was Valentine's Day last Friday, remember? Oh. Oh, indeed. Hmm, would you look at that? 
There's a couple staying in room 509, Hector and Marcella Cruz. Hector? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Do you know anything about the Cruises? Well, I saw them come in and out of the hotel a few times. We called a taxi for them once. The missus does the smiling and the other frowns a lot. Nothing to write home about. Do you have room 509 on your to-do list by any chance? I do, actually. Then maybe you go clean it? Yeah, nothing unusual here. Just a maid cleaning your room. That's my girl. I'll call you if I find anything. Just be careful, okay? I will. I promise. Thank you.